Right, so courtesy of John Prosser, we have renders of the Apple Watch Series 7, and let me tell you guys, this looks absolutely fantastic. So the first change you might notice with these renders are the flat edges. Now yes, they aren't as sharp as the ones on the iPhone 12 and iPad Pro, but there is a good reason behind that, and that is, obviously sharper corners on a watch is gonna be pretty uncomfortable to wear, especially for prolonged use, and so, this blend of the current design and the flat edge design we see on the iPhone and iPad makes a lot of sense. However, there are a few things I do not like about the design and that begins with the speakers. So instead of the pretty small speakers we have on today's Apple Watch, it seems the Series 7 is getting much larger speakers that pretty much take up the left side of the watch. And I'm not sure how to feel about that, I think I would prefer a more discreet location and Apple embracing the speakers feels very unApple like Also, you might notice the hook on the Apple Watch for the bands is a little off-centered. This feels very unApple like too because Apple's all about symmetry and having everything as perfect as possible. And so this is a pretty odd move. Now, yes, I'm aware the Rend artist could have easily made a mistake. But John did say these are one-to-one -to, -one to the CAD files and images he's seen, so I am inclined to believe that Apple for some reason has done this, and so yeah, I'm not too sure as to why. Anyways, that's the end of me hating on this design. Overall, I am up for this change, and obviously the Apple Watch hasn't really changed in terms of the overall design in quite a few years, and so this flat-edged redesign is much appreciated. Now, obviously, you might be wondering that if we are getting a new design, are we getting new sizes? Because back in 2018, with the Series 4, we had bigger Apple Watches, and so are we gonna see a 46 or even a 50 millimeter Apple Watch? Well, no. John thinks the sizes will be exactly the same as the current models, so 40 millimeters and 44 millimeters. Though do note, apparently he has seen a design with thinner bezels and a larger display, and so while the sizes of the watches themselves could be pretty similar, we could see bigger displays. Right, the next thing John mentions are colors, because yes, we're getting more colors with the Apple Watch Series 7. So obviously we saw a blue and a red with the Series 6, and apparently with the Series 7 they've been testing a variety of colours, but one John seen is a green. That's very similar to the shades that's seen on the AirPods Max and the iPad Air. Now honestly, if you did ask me before whether I wanted a green Apple Watch, I probably would have said no, but after seeing these renders I absolutely changed my mind, because that green is pretty spicy. So yeah, maybe I will be picking up a green Apple Watch very, very soon. Now, John does not tell us the other colors being tested, and he also says there is a very good chance the green could be scrapped entirely, but personally, I think that at least the sport versions of the Apple Watch Series 7 could adopt the colors we're seeing with the iPhone 13. In fact, I do still wonder why the Apple Watch does not share the same shades as the iPhone, because obviously, the Apple Watch is an accessory to the iPhone, and I'm assuming a lot of customers would appreciate having the ability to color match their iPhone with the watch, and so if we do end up seeing an orange iPhone 13 Pro, I would love to see a version of that with the Apple Watch Series 7. In fact, what I think would be best is that the stainless steel versions of the Apple Watch share the same finishes as the Pro models, and then of course, the regular iPhone and the Sport Edition watches share the same finishes. But yes, on the whole, I'm looking forward to seeing more color options on the Apple Watch. That's always welcome. So now after hearing all these juicy tidbits about the design, you might be wondering about the specs and features, and well, unfortunately we have no clue because John only managed to get images of the product, but he knows nothing about the feature set. Thankfully, there are some rumored features and also we can predict some of the upgrades we can expect based on the renders. So obviously the much larger speaker grill on the side of the Apple Watch could be referring to improved speakers. And honestly, I'm not sure who asked for this because the speakers on the current watch are pretty decent as far as I know. So this was an improvement no one asked for, but I guess we'll take it anyways. Talking about pointless upgrades, the next possible upgrade we could see with the Apple Watch Series 7 
is micro LED. So apparently micro LED has some major advantages over OLED like higher brightness, being more energy efficient, higher dynamic range, and a wider color gamut. Now this all sounds amazing, but it's a little overkill for a watch, especially since you won't be consuming content on this Apple Watch, so what's exactly the point of having better HDR on the Apple Watch? Now I do want to mention that Digitimes does not specify which version of the Apple Watch should include this tech. In fact, they just say it's going to be happening in the near future. So personally, I think that only after one of Apple's bigger products like the iPhone gets micro LED, that's when the Apple Watch will follow suit. Anyways, coming back to the renders, one thing to note is the lack of Touch ID. Now, I can't lie. This is pretty disappointing in my opinion because I've always found it pretty cumbersome that the Apple Watch has no form of biometrics. Now, yes, I know the passcodes is extremely convenient, but again, wouldn't it be way more seamless to have Touch ID built in to the Apple Watch? Now, there is still some hope because I do believe that some rumors did say that we could see an in-display scanner on the Apple Watch. Now, I can't lie, this doesn't seem as likely as maybe Apple integrating a scanner into the digital crown, but obviously with the iPhone 13 implementing the in-display technology, maybe it's cheaper and way easier to share the same scanner across the Apple Watch and the iPhone. Now, the next big rumored feature is blood glucose monitoring. Now, this is pretty huge, if true, Basically, this could give you a non-invasive method of measuring your blood glucose. So obviously right now, you have to prick your finger to get a measurement, but obviously with the watch, you could just be wearing it and it automatically measures your blood glucose, which could be truly innovative technology. And by the way, there has been evidence of this because apparently Apple has been investing heavily into a British electronic startup called Rockley Photonics, who have basically developed the technology Apple needs to make this tech work. And apparently their sensors could also measure blood alcohol levels and blood pressure. So yes, as I said, I am a huge fan of this. The only thing I'm wondering about is whether this blood glucose monitor will be medical grade or not. Obviously, since it's a non-invasive method, I think it might not be as accurate as the proper equipment. And so I think Apple's gonna ask you to basically use this as a rough measurement, but obviously don't rely on it. Anyways, that's the end of the video, but tell me in the comments below, what are your thoughts on the new design of the Apple Watch Series 7? Anyways, I'll end it here. Thank you for watching, make sure to like, and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the icon above about the M1X Max. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps.